Hello people, it's Richie here again, welcome back to my channel, now it's Richie. In this video, well I wasn't really planning on making this video, but in light of what's been happening recently, I thought I'd just do a quick video to sort of tell people what I'm doing to sort of be a little bit prepared. Like I, I subscribe to a number of these, what I call prepping channels, I've been watching for the last few months really, last sort of six months, where they prepare for like, Sort of worst case scenarios, like a lot of them are US ones where they prepare for like hurricanes and tornadoes, all sorts of stuff like that. There's one, two UK ones I've watched, the Funky Prepper and prep, Urban Prepper, people like that. And so, in light of what's been happening recently, I thought I'd just do this video so people be a little bit sort of prepared. I mean, I haven't got as much as what they've got, but I do keep a few bits and pieces on hand just in case. So. Anyway, I've got, I've got, I'm going to read from a few notes, and I'll tell you that now. It's basically about the uh, coronavirus, COVID-19. It's all over the news at the moment, isn't it? And you don't know quite what's going to happen anyway. I thought I'd post this up to give people a bit of maybe useful, useful info and tips. All this coronavirus going around. You can't be sure how it'll play out over the next few weeks or months. Parts of Italy are in lockdown and quarantine. People stopped from moving around to towns and villages and that. And we got back, there's about, I think there's about 18 or 20 cases they found in the UK in the last two or three days. So the story's moving on so quick, like it soon gets out of date. And uh, you can't always believe what you hear on the mainstream news media, because I don't think they don't always tell you everything. And if they tell you, if they tell you to don't panic, that probably means panic. But I mean, I'm not trying to worry anybody but it's just a, just a few t hints and tips just to be a bit more prepared from what people haven't done anything at all like i mean if you look at you look at the news channels you even look at some of the other like the uh cable news channels like like uh, russia today or even al jazeera and that they, they give you a diff different take on things that haven't been mentioned on like bbc or sky news i mean they had riots in ukraine a couple of days ago because a plane load of people came back from china on a rescue flight, and they weren't sort of checked as they came off the flight, and it was rights at one of the airports. Anyway, back to the video I'm going to do now. I've been talking about being prepared for emergencies, unexpected emergencies, with essential supplies and this, that and the other. I mean, if, as well as, say, the coronavirus thing that's going on, obviously going on at the moment, it's because equally applied to flood flood risk areas, which is, we've already had a lot of floods here in the UK, not so much down south where I live, but further up, up in the Midlands, up in the north of England and that, there are horrendous floods and that, people have been flooded out of their houses, like three, four foot deep floods, and they've been like that for a couple of weeks now, we're, going, we're in the middle of another storm now, Storm George or whatever it's called, we've got another storm coming across this weekend, like it seems like the last three weekends we've had like big, big storms in the UK, uh, gale force winds and heavy rain. That's been at wet February on record. Anyway, back to this video. For many years, I've always kept a good supply of canned and dried food in stock. I think it goes back to my parents' days when, in the 1970s and 80s, there were a lot of shortages due to like the industrial disputes and miners' strikes. And back in the 1970s and 80s, we had a lot, a lot of power cuts and that, and a lot of strikes and that, right? And also a cold, the Cold War fear when people didn't quite know what was going to happen then, like the threat of the nuclear war in the back, back in the 70s and 80s. So my parents always kept like, a good supply of like, tinned and dried food and that sort of thing in stock. Over the last couple of years, I've always kept it up anyway, like over the last 20 years and that, I've kept it up, I keep rotating the stock, like, but keep a good cup, cupboard full. Like. I've probably got enough for a good couple of weeks or more. Over the last couple of years, I've kept a good supply of the essentials. Due to the uncertainty over the Brexit thing, what might happen in the UK, like we had Brexit, obviously everyone's heard about that, but there was talk when they weren't quite sure what was going to happen with Brexit, there was talk of like lobbies queuing up at the ports and food shortages, all sorts of things like that could have happened, could have happened, but nothing actually, actually came of that in the end. But I'll keep, keep on my supplies and that topped up and uh, rotated like, just in, just in case like this coronavirus thing. Anyway, I'll show you what I've got around the house to be a bit more prepared from what people haven't done anything at all. Uh, I'll take you a quick round, quick show you around what I've done and what I've got. Just in case, I mean, a lot of the things I've had in stock anyway, I'll just show you what sort of bits and pieces I've got like to be prepared for either coronavirus or floods or anything unexpected really. So 
I'll show you what I've got. So in here, I'll keep a good supply of tinned food. As you can see, I've got sort of tins of meat, minced beef, that sort of stuff, chicken, chicken stew, soups, meats, vegetables, beans, that sort of thing. You can see the sort of thing you want. Chunky soups, mushroom soups, vegetables, and got like potatoes, peas, carrots, all sorts of things, tin mushrooms, peas, mushy peas, baked beans, sausages, spaghetti, there's tins of fish there, macaroni cheese. I mean, there's probably about you can see very well, there's there's a lot quite a lot in there, and there's probably about Probably about 50 or 60 tins in there at least. I've got a few more down there as well. I mean each one of those, a couple of those tins would make it like a meal for a day if you were run low on stuff. I also keep a fair bit of stuff, a cup of soups, mug, mug soups. I've got, this is a somewhat, I've got others stashed away in different places as well, but a cup, cup of soups, I've got Seven or eight boxes of those there, cup of soups, dried dried things, you know, like mug shots, things you should make up with hot water in a mug, all that type of thing. I've got quite a lot of them. I've got I've got others stashed away as well. I won't show everything, but I've got about six or seven packs of breakfast biscuits, you know, like Balvita stuff like that. Plenty of drinks of squash. I drink Ribena, and that squash obviously drinks you make up with water and that. Box porridge, porridge oats, a good thing to have. Cereals, keep quite a box lot. Wheat bix, wheat biscuits, corn flakes, shreddies, that type of thing lot. Like. Cereals and bits and pieces there. A few more boxes of cereal there as well. Also, I've got a good, good supply now. I've got at least half a dozen one litre cartons, long life UHT milk, which if, if, if like fresh milk ran out like, you've got that, and that's got a long date on it, and that's got May, May, some of it's May, June, it's got about eight or nine months shelf life, so you can keep that, keep that for a good year like, same, same thing with the tins, you don't have to worry too much about use by dates on tins, because he'll keep like several years after the date, it's just a sort of Manufacturer's day, but tin food will keep five, six, seven years out like, easily, so you ain't got to worry too much about that. Another thing I'll keep a good supply of there kitchen rolls, you know, for wiping, cleaning up, wiping hands. I've got four or, five, four or five packs of kitchen rolls in there, that type of thing. Bin bags, they're all handy if you want to cover anything up in emergency. If, if you had a leak in your roof or anything, or you wanted to keep stuff dry and that, plenty of bin bags. I've got several rolls of bin bags and that there. Another good thing to make up for a quick snack up there, as you can see, pot noodles. A load of them pot noodles up there, a dozen or so of those. Another thing to have a good supply of, toilet rolls, loo rolls, bog rolls, whatever you want to call them. Oh, you can keep about, I've got a couple of packs couple of packs of nine, a pack of twelve there, so plenty of loo rolls, enough to last you for two or three weeks. Like if, if shops happen to run out of loo rolls, then got plenty in stock, we never know. Anyway, back to the kitchen. I've got a good supply of packets of biscuits up there, they're always handy for if you want a little quick quick snack or whatever. Biscuits, no only packaged biscuits, they keep for months anyway. Jaffa cakes up there, two or three boxes of Jaffa cake. Another thing you want a good supply of, but tea bags. Got several box jars and packs of tea bags up there. Coffee, Got coffee there. Another, another car, jar of coffee up, or a couple of jars. I've got a couple of jars of coffee up there. Two or three jars of coffee there, I'll keep in stock. Kenko, there's Liddles one there. Oval teen, makes not hot chocolate drink. That's quite an energy rich drink. Ovaltine, make that up with hot water or milk. Hot chocolate there, coffee. 
sugar, keep drinking sugar in stock, like white sugar there, demerara, like brown sugar. Another handy thing, dried milk. You just make it up, you can make it out of hot or cold water, so you can have that on cereal or coffee and that. That keeps, let's see, I think that's May 20, that keeps for a long time. See, that makes, that, that carton there, 340 grams, that make up to about seven pints of milk. So that's another good thing to have in stock. Another thing to always have a good supply of. Antibacterial, no, surface cleaners for cleaning and cleaning anything. Surface, worktops, utensils, anything like that. Anti, that's dental antibacterial. Another one, kitchen cleaner there. Antibacterial hand soap, hand washing soap, because they keep on saying best best way to avoid spreading the coronavirus is by regular hand washing. So good wash of the antibacterial soap and water. Antibacterial washing up liquid there. That type of thing. I can always keep two or three bottles of that type of thing in stock. Cable ties, duct tape, that sort, that type of thing. They're always handy for emergencies, tying things up, securing stuff. Another handy thing, in case it happens to be like, you more, you feel like a flood risk area, when you're like that, you had storms, you had power cuts, keep, thank you, torches, lanterns, that sort of thing. I've got several LED torches, that's just a couple of me, just a couple I keep on top of the fridge so I can grab them in the emergency if they happen to have a power cut, I know where they are. I've got other torches all around the house. I'll keep that, keep that one just hanging up on the hook in the living room light. So if it happened to be a power cut, that's an LED sort of hand lamp. I can just grab it, just know where it is straight away. Like obviously, battery operated lanterns. If you battery operated lanterns and torches, well, it's like check them every two or three months, test them every few two or three months, make sure the batteries are still okay and all working okay, as long as it's all working. And obviously keep a good supply of spare batteries. You know, got a couple more, got a couple of big, big, big hand lamps there, like big six volt hand lamps. Got that one. Got another one there, big hand. I used to, I used to use these when we used to go camping years ago, so yeah, they're always handy to have, like give a good beam of light. And obviously spare spare batteries for whatever lands you've got like I mean that yellow one that takes the big PJ996 6 volt lantern battery I've got a whole I've got about 10 of those batteries in the box of the shed like so I've got plenty of those so that's the batteries for those in there I don't think you can see very well I've got, I've got good supply of batteries for all sorts of things there's D size for the other hand lamp AA and triple triple A size batteries for all the other like LED torches, like most of those use double A's or treble A batteries. So I've got I've got dozens of batteries in stock there. Like, you know, it's got twenty thirteen on it. But those those batteries, I've had batteries ten years past their date, and they're still perfectly good. Especially like Energizer and Duracell and that lot. I've got another. I think it's like a. I think that's a fluorescent lantern I got down there. That's another lantern, another torch. I used to collect torches years ago, so I've got dozens of them anyway. Dotted around older ones, newer ones. They all work. They've all got batteries in. Obviously another thing, I know most people got all this sort of stuff, but make sure you've got plenty of like warm warm jackets, fleecy jackets, padded jackets, waterproof stuff, that type of thing. Make sure you can say you've got plenty of waterproof jackets and warm jackets, outdoor stuff. In case there's a power cut or anything like. I've got high vis stuff, all sorts of stuff I've got there like so. And obviously another thing, if if you're in a not so much the coronavirus, but if you're in a flood if you're in a flood prone area Keep all this, all your supplies like up, up off the ground, or even in an upstairs room, just to be on the safe side. Another thing that people, a lot of people don't always realise till it actually happens. Most most people have got central heating in their houses in the UK and probably other countries as well. Like central heating, which runs off a like gas gas fueled boiler. If you had an electricity outage or power cut or whatever, your central heating wouldn't work because the boiler would stop. The electric pump in the boiler that would stop, and all the electronics obviously would stop working. Unless you've got like your own generator or anything, but you're just relying on normal, normal utilities like and your your power goes down and your boiler is stopped. There's no pump or electronics, so you wouldn't have any central heating. I actually haven't got central heating. I think it's a bit of a rip off heating every room when you only need perhaps heat one or two. So I've got 
what normal just standard gas fires. I've got one in the front room here, another one in the living room. They just they just they just run off gas with spark ignitions. You don't need any electricity, so if power went down. You'd still have heat in the house. Pretty pretty essential. Same with cooking. I've got a normal traditional gas cooker in the kitchen there. Now eye level grill, four rings, oven. So if, you, if the power went down, I, mean, I use microwave a lot. I do a lot, lot of cooking in the microwave. So but if the power went down, obviously you wouldn't have your microwave. So you know, if you cook, you say you've got your cooker, grill, oven. So you do all your cooking on there. And even if, it, if it comes to the worst, you can like put a, put a gas ring on, keep the kitchen warm, like. I mean, not leave it on permanently, but just pull it a few minutes at a time, you can have a gas ring on, help keep the kitchen warm. Another good thing to have, if the power went down, well, this is my radio I have in the kitchen, like just normal AM, FM, radio tape type of thing, CD. But battery powered radio, I always keep batteries in this one, this one uses 6D batteries, so if the power went down, just pull the main seat out the back, you can have radio on batteries then for keeping up to date with like local news and information and emergency announcements, that type of thing. And another thing, a lot, a lot of people don't realise till it happens, is that if you had a power failure or power outage, power cut, whatever you want to call it, your phone wouldn't work, not, to, not your mobile, but your mobile phone will still work as long as it's charged up. But if your power goes down, your normal cordless phone that you use around the house, your landline phone, whatever you want to call it, BT phone, Although the handset itself has got batteries in it and it works independent of the base, base station runs off the mains power. And I don't think there's a, I don't think there's any that I know of on the market that run on their own power source. They all rely on being connected to the mains all the time. So if the mains goes down, then you haven't got landline phone. So what I do, I've always kept it just in a drawer, just on standby. And I've had this one since eight, about mid eighties, nineties. Standard, just a corded, corded phone or a handset. I'll test that every few months just to make sure it's still working. Pretty reliable that house, and that's an old BT, BT Viscount phone from the 80s. Bit vintage, you know. You, you can plug that into an ordinary BT phone socket, and you don't need any mains power for it to work. You have to plug it in the phone socket, and it'll work just as a basic telephone. Yes, I've got a few face masks in there as well, because you never know. Best to have them now rather than not have them. Same sort of thing with for your phones and that. Keep your, always keep your mobiles and mobile phones and smartphones and that charged up. Always keep a couple of power banks handy. I've got a couple, a couple of these power banks. Keep them keep them fully charged. Let's test that one now. Hundred percent. That's keep the power banks. So if your power goes down, you've got a bit more power for charging your phones and whatever like that sort of thing for emergencies. Leads me on to another thing, like sim similarly to your home phone light, if, you, if, you, if your power went down, you had a power outage, then you wouldn't have any home broadband because your router, like my, my router sitting up there, like, if your power goes down, your router runs off mains power, you haven't got any other power source, you haven't got any internet or communications like online or anything, so the only internet connected you'd have is from your smartphone. Another thing you'd want, mainly for like, if you're running out of uh, supplies, or you had a flood risk going on, flooding going on, you want some, something for clean water, mainly for drink, drinking is the most number one priority, then you know, for washing and that type of stuff. So, I've got a, I've got a, that's a, that is a brand new wheelie bin, it's never had rubbish or anything, it's totally clean inside, it's all been wa washed out and washed out with detergent hot water when I first got it a couple of years ago, brand new wheelie bin. I'll keep that, I'll keep a number of clean clean buckets and water containers and that in there like so you can fill all, fill all those up with water, obviously keep them somewhere up off the ground and cover, cover the tops up with anything really wood or pieces of wood or even like cling film that you cover the tops up with like and worst comes to worst you could even fill this wheelie bin up with fresh water keep it somewhere, keep it somewhere clean like I mean that hold about 30 35, 40 gallons of water. I think that's that. Yeah, it's a 70 litre wheelie bin. It's a 70 litre. Hold, hold about 20, 30 gallons of water. If you fill that right up, so you'd have a good supply of water in there. Like, or to keep that just in the garage, just empty with the buckets and that inside. 
Another thing, I mean, I, I don't drive, I don't drive a car myself, right? But another thing you'd want, a bit of transport, you want to get around, say if road, roads, not roads and everything were shut, right? Like, they stop people driving around, right? Or keep a couple of bicycles in the shed, so you need to drive around or get around the emergency. I've got a couple of bikes in the shed just to be on the safe side. Uh, basically, that was about it for this video. So, I'm, well, I did speak my mind a bit, but it's best, it's best to be a bit prepared rather than not do anything. So, so that is uh, about the end of this video. So, take care, people. Don't have nightmares, as they say. And we'll see you on the next one. See you later.